when I make mistakes over and over and the same mistakes over and over. Can you relate? Let's talk about it today on the Landlord Coach Daily Ish Show. Let's drop the needle. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everyone, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily Ish Show. It is nice to see you. So today we're going to be talking about making the same mistakes over and over and mistakes that I have made over and over. My God, how many times do I have to make them until they hurt bad enough to where I stop making them? <laughs> so we're going to be talking about that today. If you're joining me today, I would love to hear about where you're from, what uh, what area of the country you're from. And uh, I think I'm up to three actual viewers. Wow. It's like, I don't know what to do with that number. But uh, no, thanks for all the support you guys have been giving. Really quick, I just want to share this with you. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about how to run a rental business and not make these same mistakes over and over and over and uh, learn from someone else, then um, maybe who's been down that road, go to landlordcoach.com forward slash VIP and you can check that out. But uh, today when I make the same mistakes over and over, I'll talk more about the course here at the end. But making them say, same mistakes over and over and over. Of course, it, it reminded me, um, I was talking to a uh, coaching client I hadn't talked to in a while, just checking in, seeing how they were doing. And uh, they were, they were struggling. They were, they were having some difficulties. They had um, some things happen and they regressed a little bit. They were doing, they were real, doing really well, but their family life has just kind of, it's not been the most supportive system. And unfortunately, um, if you've not heard that quote, that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, I think there's a tremendous amount of truth in that. And if you don't have a good support system, you know, if you're trying, going to be trying new things and, and you have to think of, I, I kind of think of thought patterns and I don't know if this is right, but this is, you know, certainly my, certainly a plausible theory. But if you think about like your thought patterns, I think there's an actual like pattern, like in your brain, it fires through a specific pattern, a path of neural pathways. Like it's literally a path of thinking, like a mind, a way of thinking. And if you think about that as like a river that runs down from the top of a top of a mountain to the bottom of a mountain, that the longer that stream or river or whatever has been allowed to run, it carves a deeper and deeper trench into the mountain, right? And I think that's why maybe that line of thinking of you can't teach an old dog new tricks, I think that maybe has some legs to it, no pun intended. But the reason being is because it's hard to, it's hard to change that river. It's hard to change that path unless you block it off or unless maybe there's an earthquake or something that changes the topography of that mountain, right? Well, I think the same thing happens in our brains. I think that 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 set of neural pathways, it's really tough to stop thinking a certain way because you've been doing it that way for so long. Well, and that's why it's important. Like, again, we're going to have a lot of people making New Year's resolutions. Of course, that, that always seems to happen. Um, I tend to not do that. I tend to, if I see something that I need to change, I try to change it as, as quickly as I possibly can, as long as it's in alignment with my vision. And, you know, there's a lot of people who want to get into the real estate business, want to people who want to grow the real estate business, want to people just change in general. They want to make some changes in their life and they're, they're, they're wanting to do that. Um, and I'm happy to offer, you know, my, my input, certainly not my input is the only input that these should be getting, but just, you know, just because they see, um, I'm, I'm embrace change. I mean, I really like change. Sometimes I just like changing for change's sake. Um, you know, sometimes I'll just take a shower in the dark just to try to feel my way around. I know that seems weird, but it, it, it activates different parts of your body, different parts of your brain, right? To figure that out. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I brushed my teeth with shampoo once before. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. But I was talking to this, this uh, former student of mine and, you know, asked them how they were doing and they were struggling about how to buy Christmas for their children. And I was like, well, what do, you, what do you have bought already? And they, well, I've got this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. It, it sounded like a, like a, a lot, like a lot, a lot. And I knew that where they had come from, they had been on the struggle bus before. And I thought, well, why are you feel like you, the need to buy them so much? And I knew the answer. It's, well, I never got a lot for Christmas and I want to, you know, get something for my kids that I didn't have and this and that. And it, I had to 
be authentic with them for a second. And I was like, look, I, I'm not telling you what to think or how to feel or whatever. I understand. I mean, I've got kids of my own and my bride and I are raising and we're doing the best that we can with the tools that we were given and we're trying to sharpen those tools as much as we can. But why are you teaching your kids to set yourself up for failure? Why is that like that you feel like you need to go broke over Christmas? You know, like, why is that the lesson? And, you know, she knew it was wrong. She knew 100% it was wrong. And he knew it was wrong. You know, um, the, 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 the support system that, that she had, but it didn't stop him from doing it. And I thought that that was a really interesting, I just thought that was an interesting lesson that even though we know it's wrong and we're still going to continue to make these same mistakes because we're going to continue to use that same river that's going to take us from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain over and over and over, even though we know that's the wrong path, that's the path that you're going to go to. That's the default. That's the path you default to because that's the one, you know, so it's really interesting that, you know, and, I, and I've read many books on, you know, changing patterns and changing habits and things like that. Um, the, the last one that I read, uh, I think was called the one thing. I think that was the last book I read on that, but it takes, roughly on average 66 days to change a habit, you know, to, 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 or to form a new habit. So I'm thinking if you're having to stop an old habit and start a new habit, it would, it would venture to reason then that it would take 66 days on average for each one. Right. And if you're talking even more about a physical habit, it can take even longer, you know, to stop one particular habit and to start a new one. That's why, you know, I really caution people to try, you know, especially, when they're going through the course, like the course I mentioned earlier, becoming a VIP in the rental business, you know, you can't turn all this stuff around overnight. You can't like, you know, like I was talking to this, um, this person where they had just bad, they had a bad relationship with money. And, you know, it was interesting because, you know, I could have that conversation with her and she's like, well, my sister tells me this all the time and this and that. And, you know, it doesn't seem to stop anything because it seems like, she's trying to do too much at once. Like, you know, like, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stop, uh, you know, uh, letting my, um, you know, residents, my tenants call me whenever I, I want, or I'm going to stop, you know, this abusive relationship that I have with my, my sister. And I'm going to, you know, do, I'm going to eat better and I'm going to go to the gym, you know, three times a day and I'm going to get up at 5 AM and I'm going to, you know, like it's too much. That's why a lot of those things fail. I mean, it's a reason why a lot of my stuff failed. Whenever I would try it, I would just try too much. It's in my nature to stress myself out. And that's, you know, just part of it, I guess, but it just wasn't working. That's why a lot of that stuff wasn't working. So um, that's why, you know, I, it was interesting. Um, you know, I, I, hopefully I felt like I was giving her some good advice, but without, you know, being intentional without some coaching and sometimes just flat out therapy, which I'm not a therapist, but sometimes it's just going to take something really, really radical to change that for them. Um, it was interesting though, the other day and talking about shifting now to a relationship with money, about the same mistakes that I made, you know, over and over again, my, I would like to say that my father and my mother definitely instilled different things in us kids. Uh, definitely a work ethic. And I'm very grateful, even though I don't have a great relationship with all my siblings. Um, all of us are workers. All of us are. I mean, that's one thing that there's with, with very few exceptions, all of us in our family work way more than we have to. And that's, that's pretty cool, but not all of us had a great relationship with money. And I know I didn't have a great relationship with money, you know, growing up, especially, you know, being in the military where I had more money than I needed. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really treat money that well. And it took me a while. It took me well into my adult years to figure some of that stuff out. And of course I'm still figuring it out, but it was interesting because I was, um, we went shopping. I went, uh, I'm, I'm taking my youngest shopping today and our oldest, we took shopping yesterday. So Leland, I, and it just, he and I, so we're walking through the mall and we're just doing this thing and we're chit chatting about this and that. And, um, we got onto the subject of how much to spend and, I had to recognize for just a second that, you know, I want to teach my kids. We always want to teach our kids as much as we possibly can to avoid the mistakes that we have and all this other stuff. And as I'm, you know, telling him about this and we're having this great time, you know, and we're having this conversation. And it was at that point, I just realized that I had, that I forgot why I was there. 
I forgot why, um, why I was there with my oldest son. We're there to hang out. We're there to spend time with each other. He's not there to get a freaking tutorial from old man Dolphini. He needed to hang out with his dad. And I forgot that. There's certainly a time and place. And I, and I fortunately have the aware with the, the, the recognition and the awareness at that point in time to say, oh, wait a minute. You know what? You don't care about any of this stuff. Let's just start talking about other things. I just want you, you know, and I explain real quick as to why, look, I just don't want you to run, run into, you know, money problems when you're older. I don't want you to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want you to worry about this stuff. You know, so of course we talked about, you know, 10%, the first 10% goes back to God and the next 10% goes to savings. And then we'll talk about the next, the, the, you live off the 80, right? So I didn't want him to spend the entire 80. So he kind of understood that. And that's really where we left it. And that's unfortunately where so few people actually live. And because I never lived on my 80%, I lived on, you know, 105% like everybody else <laughs> in the world, or at least in America. Um, you know, I certainly didn't want him to have that same, uh, that same problem. So um, let's see, Keith Anderson. Oh, hey, my bride is watching. Hey there, Jenny Pooh. Good to see you. Um, Keith Anderson, most money problems are actually psychological problems. That is true. And that reminds me um, of uh, my good friend. Uh, I don't think she's joining us tonight. <clears throat> um, Christine Lucan, she wrote a book called Money is Emotional. And um, there was actually a neat, I don't think it was in that book. I think it was in her sub, in her sequel. She had another book, um, Manage Money Like a Boss. I think it was maybe or something like that. Um, but she had one, there was a, a uh, uh, an exercise in one of the books, which I actually did was to write a letter to money and, you know, explain why you feel like you have a bad relationship with money. It was really, it, it was a weird exercise, but I got to tell you, it was actually pretty cool. So uh, if you don't have that book, I would highly recommend it from my good friend, Christine Logan, but um, Al Williamson, thank you. Funny, good stuff. I appreciate it. And uh, so that's all I have for today. And um, I know again, if, um, if it's stuff that, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not any Dave Ramsey by any stretch. I mean, that dude, he's, he understands financial stuff that on a level that I don't have any, any desire to understand. But, um, I guess the, the, you know, long and short of it is how you're teaching, what, what things are you doing that actually is teaching your kids how to handle money, you know, and it doesn't necessarily need to be having this tutorial in the middle of a mall while you're actually going and supposed to be just hanging out and, and having a good time. So that's the big thing. Anyway, uh, let me wrap up today. Um, the Again, if you are interested in the course, it is the landlordcoach.com forward slash VIP. What the VIP course is, is vision infrastructure process. It is about how to create a real estate business that does not run your life, that does not take all of your time to occupy. So you can go out and do cool stuff. So you can go out and do all the things that are most important to you. Spending time with the, your loved ones and not being, uh, not being, held hostage to how you produce income. Um, of course, this is being sponsored by RentAware, which is rentaware.com, who is a property management software provider. So if you are a mom and pop landlord and you're looking for property management software, um, these folks, they've got such a great platform and it is a, it's kind of a no brainer in terms of using that, that uh, their software. Check them out at rentaware.com. Um, last, let's go ahead and finish up with a quote of the day, which is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, of course, by Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, good God, I can't even talk today. And uh, a very famous quote by a very brilliant dude. All right, that's all I have, everybody. Please be sure to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. But most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time.